Welcome to the Effortless English Show with the world's number one English teacher, A.J. Hogue, where A.J.'s more than 40 million students worldwide finally learn English once and for all without the boring textbooks, classrooms, and grammar drills. Here's A.J. with a quick piece to help you learn to speak fluent English effortlessly. <clears throat> Hi, I'm A.J. Hogue, the author of Effortless English, Learn to Speak English Like a Native father of the effortless English system. I train you, teach you, help you speak English fluently. You speak English powerfully. You speak English confidently. You speak English effortlessly. When you commit to my VIP program at EffortlessEnglishClub.com, go to that website, EffortlessEnglishClub.com, join my VIP program, and commit, commit, Commit to my VIP program at EffortlessEnglishClub.com. Talk about goals today. Goals. Goals. Goals are tricky. They're a little bit tricky. So, you know, there are a lot of opinions out there about how to make goals. And, you know, there's kind of a general, we, what we call conventional wisdom. Conventional wisdom. It means common sense. It's what most people think about making goals. You'll hear kind of the same advice all the time about how to make a goal. But I think the conventional wisdom, I think the common sense ideas, the common ideas about goals are missing some things. It's, the, the advice is not great. It's okay, but it's not great. And so I think goals are a little more complicated in some ways, a little more dangerous than most people understand. So we have to think carefully about how to make a goal, how to think about the goals, what mindset to have, etc. Because if we do it wrong, if you do it wrong, if you make goals in a wrong way, meaning not skillful, it can actually hurt your motivation. You know, a goal, if you do a goal, make a goal, badly, the goal will actually hurt your motivation. It will make you less motivated. It will make you less likely to succeed. So this is why it's important because we have to do our goal setting in a way that makes us more motivated because that's what goals are for, right? Go the, the idea of having a goal is it motivates us to improve in some way to get better. So if the goal does not do that, if the goal makes you feel less powerful, less confident, less motivated, it's a bad goal. It's done badly. So we'll talk about this in a little more detail. Today we're live on Facebook today. Decided to change over to Facebook. I do find the quality of the comments are better on Facebook. People are more focused on the topic. On YouTube we get... This is generally, I find this in YouTube in general, not just my channel, but in <laughs> all around the internet, that the YouTube comments just not as quite as good. The quality is just a little bit less. People are more distracted, that, that kind of thing. So I do like being on Facebook for that reason. I don't like the company Facebook, but I do like our audience. So welcome to all of you. Let's talk about goals first. I'm a little late today at the live show because my babies were late going to bed. They were. We stayed up late tonight. So it took a little longer. So the show might be a little shorter today. So let's just jump in really quickly. Goals. Okay, so there's a few mindsets about goals, right? Well, people always say, oh, you should have goals, goals. They should be specific. They should be measurable, right? And that's fine. That's fine. That's decent advice, okay? You have a very specific goal, meaning you know exactly what you want to achieve and you have maybe a specific date, right? And you can measure the goal. You did it or you did not do it. Then you have things like The Secret, like the book The Secret, which is quite popular. And this, the idea of The Secret is that you, uh, I mean, the main idea of The Secret is you add a lot of emotion to your goal so that you visualize it. You like, you see, you imagine the goal. You imagine you have achieved it already and you let yourself feel wonderful and feel great, imagining how wonderful it is to achieve the goal. So this is the idea. 
Oh, and I hear baby is crying in the other room. Oh, no. Do you need help in there? <laughs> okay, anyway. So this is the idea of making goals. And, you know, this, this, this advice is okay. It's not bad. One second. I need to just do something really quickly here. I've got a, a baby problem. I just need to check on my baby. Sorry, guys. One second. Everything okay? It's all right? Okay, guys. All right. I think it's okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, one more thing. Sorry about this. Yeah, I'm going to ban this guy. One second. Uh, delete, and he's gone. All right, good. Okay, just needed to ban somebody. All right, so goals. So the idea, the secret. People, oh, they're imagining. You got to put all this emotion into it. That's also nice. It makes the goal more powerful. So fair enough. So what is the problem? The problem is this, that... As I was discussing yesterday, sometimes if you have too much emotion about your goal, too much emotion, that it actually can hurt you. And the reason is this, is that you, be, you want it so much. I want it, I want it, I want it, I want it, that it can actually uh, kind of take away your energy. And the key thing is that it creates fear. Fear. Fear of what? Fear of failure. Fear of not achieving your goal. This is demotivating, meaning it's the opposite of motivation. That while it's good to have a lot of strong, positive emotions to get really excited about your goals, sometimes this can turn into fear or it can take away too much of your energy. Why? Because a few reasons. Number one, if you have a big goal, if you have a big goal and you're constantly thinking about it, dreaming about it, thinking about it, but it's far away. It's far, far away. It's a big goal, so you need a lot of time. Maybe you get excited for a few days. Maybe you get excited for a few weeks. But then what happens after a month, after two months, after three months? You can start to get a little depressed, sometimes worried, sometimes afraid that you're never going to do it, right? You're imagining, imagining, imagining the end. Imagining the end, this using the secret. Oh, it's so great. It's so great. But it's it actually starts to feel impossible because you're imagining something that's so totally different than your life now. So this can actually hurt your motivation sometimes because you start to realize, OK, this dream is very nice, but it's nothing like my life now. I'm so, so far away from it. And by reminding yourself, by thinking about the end goal too much, with too much emotion, you can actually start to become a little depressed about it. You start to feel like, oh, I'm never going to do it, right? So using the secret, like that book, can actually hurt you in that case. I think the secret works better for shorter goals, goals that are closer where you really can feel you're getting closer. You really feel that it's possible. And so when you think, ah, it's possible, then indeed, yes, you start to imagine it, you feel the emotion of it, of, of the victory, and this will make you more excited. This will give you greater and greater motivation because you feel like, I can do it. You have that confidence. But when the secret hurts you, that technique of the secret, where it hurts you, where it's not effective, I think, is when the goal is too, too big, too, too far away. When really inside, you really don't believe you can do it. It seems so far. And you might get excited a little bit, but then eventually what happens is you lose your motivation because you start to feel, oh, this excitement, I want it, I want it, but right now I'm too far. And you start to feel bad now, right? You start to feel that something's wrong now. And you're focusing too much on the end, too much on the end, and you're not enjoying right now. You're not enjoying the process. And that will destroy your motivation, especially for a large goal. 
So again, let's give an example. We'll use the marathon example because it's so easy. It's such a clear example. So imagine, okay, me, me right now. I'm thin. I'm in good shape. Generally decent fitness. Let's imagine I have a goal. I'm going to do a marathon in six months. Okay, if I use the secret, I imagine myself crossing the finish line, my, my arms in the air, feeling great. Will this help me? Yeah, I will because I feel very confident I can do it. In six months, I definitely could do a marathon. Okay, I have no doubt about it at all. I mean, I've done them before and I'm, I'm in pretty good shape, a decent fitness level. I could not do a marathon today, but I could do it in six months, okay? So if I really got excited about it, it would motivate me a lot. But on the other hand, let's imagine my mom, my mom who is, you know, still very overweight, who has never run one mile. In fact, even walking one mile would be very difficult for her. She's in, she's, you know, in her 70s, she's overweight her whole life, terrible fitness level. For her, if she tried to use the secret of imagining a marathon, doing a marathon, I don't think it would help her. I think it would actually be the opposite because she would feel it was impossible. I think she would feel it was just terrible. You know, like, I can't do it. I can't do it. There's no way. This is impossible. And so by imagining this marathon, I think she would be imagining it. It's, it would seem great. But then she would wake up in the daytime and she feels like, oh, look at me. Like, there's, I'm never going to do this. And it would actually cause her to hurt, to lose motivation. And she would start to feel like I'm too far. And she would stop focusing on now. So you have to enjoy the process. Like, I enjoy running. I enjoy exercising. So training for a marathon sounds fun. Every day would be enjoyable for me. But for my mom, no. For my mom, it would be better for her to focus on a shorter goal, like just walking for an hour in, in the park and focus on enjoying it and looking at the trees and not something huge like a marathon. She might, maybe in her mind, in her... She would, maybe someday I'll do a marathon. But focusing on that, focusing on something too far away would not be helpful. And it's kind of the same for you, of course, about English. So depends on your level. If you are advanced already, you're very advanced, and you have a goal, I want to be like near native, right? You want to be a very high mastery. Well, if you're advanced now already, you can already understand movies and TV. You can read most books in English. Well, that's a good goal for you. That would be a great goal because you would feel ah, it's possible. It would motivate you to do better, right? Not be lazy. Keep improving your English. On the other hand, for a beginner, someone starting with English, just beginning where English feels so, so difficult, it seems like such a big, difficult thing to do. Just to speak English, just to be basically fluent, feels like a lot. For a beginner like that, I think it's a bad idea to want to, to think about becoming like a native. Even for some intermediate level, that's most of you, I think trying to become native, like a native speaker, it's a nice goal, you know, for the future, but I think don't focus on that now because it will feel too far, too, too, too difficult. And it actually can hurt your motivation. Why? Because each day you realize you're not close. Each day you wake up and you're like, oh, and you, maybe you improve. Maybe your vocabulary is growing. Your fluency is much better. You understand much more but you don't enjoy your improvement. Why? Because every day you say, I'm still not native. I'm still not native. I'm still not native. You're focusing too much on this super, 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 super high goal. So it's killing your enjoyment now. You're not noticing your improvement. You're not noticing how wonderful your English is already. In fact, I think it's can be very motivating to instead focus backwards, focus on the past, focus on the past. Think about two years ago, 
your English two years ago. Think about it. How good was your English two years ago? You're listening, you're speaking, you're reading. And then compare to now. And hopefully you have improved. Some of you have improved a lot in two years. Maybe even three months ago. Three months ago, you have improved. That's why we're doing this challenge, this four-month challenge. Because the idea is you started last month and you're making a big effort. Last month, this month, we continue. We continue until end of November. At the end of November, what will we do? We're going to remember. We're going to think back to August, August 1st. We're going to think back to August 1st and we're going to notice how much did we improve. And I think all of us will improve. And that's very motivating. Then you feel like, yes, wow, I really have improved. In four months, I improved a lot. My listening's better. Maybe my speaking is better. My reading is better. Maybe your writing is better, right? And this is very, very motivating. So sometimes, instead of looking forward at a big goal far away, often it's helpful to look back and to realize you have already made improvements, to notice and enjoy your improvements now. Don't, don't wait to be happy. This is the point. See, some goals are good. They're fine. But the problem is some people have an idea that, oh, I cannot be happy until I reach my goal. I will wait to be happy until I reach the goal. I will wait to enjoy English until I am super perfect. I will wait <laughs> to be excited until I run a marathon or a double marathon. And that's where, that's the problem. We have to enjoy the whole, every step. It's just like a journey, right? It's just like a trip. You don't, if you go to travel, maybe you want to travel around the world, you know, a big trip. One year, travel around the world. So you realize, right, it would be crazy, crazy to just focus on the last day of your trip. Ah, oh, I can't wait till the end of the trip, the last day. That's my goal. I'll finish the big trip. Ah, oh, then I'll be happy. Of course, that's crazy because you want to enjoy every day of the trip. Every day could be enjoyable. Every day a new experience. Every day you learn something. The whole trip the whole journey, that entire year could be magical and wonderful. Well, it's the same with learning. It's the same with anything in life that it's great to have the goal, but we have to remember, enjoy each day, each step. Enjoy your English level right now. Right now, you're listening to me only in English. My podcast is usually 45 minutes. 50 minutes, an hour or more, only English, and you are understanding. That's amazing. Think, remember when you were a beginner. Remember when you were a beginner. This, today, what you are doing now, you probably thought, ah, oh, that would be impossible. Listen to an American talk for one hour, only in English, and understand most of it, right? Right? Sometime in your past, you thought that will be very tough. That's impossible. And now you're doing it right now. So enjoy it. Okay. Don't enjoy it. It's good. Yes. You want to improve. Yes. You want to get better, but also enjoy now. Enjoy and remember you have already improved a lot. Enjoy it. You can read in English now. You're doing our challenge. You're listening. You know, on our, uh, I'll show our Gab group. On our Gab group, you know, we have people who are listening to all kinds of cool things and they're understanding. You know, like here, speaking, oh, this is Hindi, it's a little different. But, you know, look at this, like uh, Brave New World. And, you know, people are reading Brave New World now and listening, of course, to my show about Brave New World. And uh, listen, Julia uh, Takita is uh, listening to an audiobook by Brian Tracy, a motivational speaker about success. You know, how cool is that? It, it's all in English. Um, Asma is listening to Matthew McConaughey, an actor, uh, some kind of talk. 
this I mean just look at all these cool things um Ibrahim Ali is listening uh or is reading while listening so reading and listening to a Robert Kiyosaki book about education why A students work for C students so cool and he's also reading another Robert Kiyosaki book and listening sorry uh fake money fake teachers which I want to read that book it sounds great and Lisa is uh, listening to Jane Austen, right? Famous British uh, uh, writer, Jane Austen. Mansfield Park also has a nice movie, Mansfield Park. Yeah, here's Carol. She's listening to uh, Steve Coffin and Matt vs. Japan, who I will be, I'll be interviewing Matt vs. Japan next week, which is cool. She's listening to a few of his... Uh, uh, looks like she's doing a lot of Matt vs. Japan's um, YouTube videos, which is great. She's getting ready for my interview next week. But look at this. It's all in English, all these cool things. You know, I know people are listening to Tony Robbins. Some of you are reading Tony Robbins. Some of you watched Steve Kaufman yesterday, had a live uh, video also about language learning. See, this is it. You got to enjoy it. You got to enjoy it now. So it's you're improving, but it's very important to enjoy it while you're improving. Enjoy what you are doing now. Don't, this is the problem with goals. See, this is the weak point, or I would say the danger, the possible danger of goals. The possible danger of goals is you live in the future. You live just imagining some perfect day in the future that might not come. It might never come, right? And you, and you forget about now. You forget to enjoy now. You forget to love what you're doing now. You forget to appreciate your success that you already have. You forget gratitude, okay? And that can hurt your motivation. So yes, have a goal, but my idea of goals, what I, my way to do goals now is I'll make a goal, maybe a big goal, and I'll kind of, it's in my mind, and then I push it aside and I kind of forget about it. I kind of forget. Like I have a goal to be fluent in Japanese, okay? But it's very big, it's far away. So I'm not going to think every day, fluent Japanese, fluent Japanese. It'll just stress me out. It's too far away. So I have it in my mind. I push it away. And instead, I focus on today. Today, I will do seven hours of Japanese. Tomorrow, I will do seven hours of Japanese. I'm focused just on our challenge. It's just this four-month challenge. That's all. I'm just trying to... I have a certain number of hours I want to do um, during our challenge. So we have three more months, September, October, November. So that's all. I'm just focused on that only and just enjoying it and I'm improving and that's all. Just focus on enjoying it, improving. I've, you know, focus on finding some interesting things in Japanese that I can understand, which is not much, but I find some stuff. And this is much better. If I focused on being fluent, it would destroy my motivation and stress me out, get me really stressed. If I focused on someone like Matt versus Japan and his super high level, it would just, it would hurt my motivation. Like, I'm never going to do that. Uh, maybe I will. I don't know, but we'll see. The point is, though, you got to really have your goal and then kind of your big goal, push it away, and then focus closer to now and enjoy now. And this works much better. I find this works much, much better for goal setting. This is a more effective, more powerful, more motivating way to use goals. All right, there you go. Let's get into the comments. Fernando says, I just finished reading your book. I think it was amazing. I'm confused in some areas. Well, you can ask questions, Fernando. I think I finally banned this guy. He just kept spamming the site. Ah. Okay, Rashid says, you're a great teacher. Now I'm fluent in English. I started to take English lessons uh, for advanced level. I applied your methods in learning Spanish. They are valid for any language. Thanks so much. Yes, of course they are. 
Of course, I'm a native speaker of English, so I only teach English, of course. <laughs> I'm not qualified to teach anything else. But yes, the ideas, the principles are uh, effective for any language. I mean, we'll see when I inter interview Matt next week. The principles, he, he, we agree, I, I already know uh, that the basic principles he used to learn Japanese are very similar to the ones that I'm teaching you to learn English. Steve Kaufman discusses similar principles. You know, we're all influenced by Stephen Krashen and uh, reality. <laughs> Pam says, hello from Passel. Hello to you. Hello to Passel, my friends in Vietnam. Okay. Yeah, like Merrick says, and this is a, Merrick is saying this in a very, you know, kind of effective summary here. Maintaining balance and motivation is very important. I recently exaggerated my ambition to ride a bike and the goals I set myself for it. And that's right, I'm a little depressed now because I couldn't achieve my goals. Yeah, it can happen. There was a fear of failure, and the excitement of riding turned into an obsession with realizing my plans. Now I have to sort it out from the beginning, catch the mistakes I've made. Yes, that's right. This is, that's a good example of what can happen when your goal, you set the goal too big and you become crazy about it because then you stop enjoying what you're doing you're just so focused because the goal seems so huge. You think you have to, ah, crazy. You become kind of crazy about it and you kind of lose the enjoyment. Instead, you're motivated by fear of failure. And this kills your enjoyment. And often then you do not achieve the goal. And all you did was kind of kill your fun, kill the enjoyment. So it's, it's tricky. It's tricky. It's nice to dream big. I, 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 I love the idea of dreaming big, but we have to... I think it's also good, like like I said, for the big, big, big goals, I like to put them out there like as a possibility. But the ones I fo really focus on are shorter. They're ones that I feel confident about achieving. Like, am I confident about being fluent in Japanese right now? I'm not. So I'm not going to focus on that. It would just, it'll just make me crazy and stressed out. Am I confident I can do 200 hours per month? September and then October and November. Can I do 600 more hours uh, before our challenge is finished? Yes, that I know I can do. So that's a good goal. It motivates me. I feel good about it. And uh, it's a it's a little difficult. It definitely pushes me. It pushes me to you know work a little harder. But it's you know it's just hours. I don't have. It's not really performance. So I know I can do it. So it's motivating. But motivating in a positive way makes me enjoy every day and I'm not stressed about it. So that goal works very well. That kind of goal helps. So like Merrick had, let's say he had, I don't know what his goal for a bike, but maybe, you know, let's say he wanted to do some huge long distance race or something. So maybe instead, you can have that as a maybe an idea. Like I'll just talk about running. I know running better. You know, maybe I in my mind I say I want to do a double marathon. I mean, like 50 mile race. But if I focus on that, that is a large and quite difficult thing to do. So instead, I would focus on doing maybe I'm going to do a marathon in six months. Kind of have in my mind, you know, maybe I'll do the double marathon after that. But I'm not going to focus on the double marathon too much because it's too far right now. I would focus just on doing a regular marathon first. After the regular marathon, then I'll be in great shape and then I'll think, hmm, maybe now I'll focus on the double marathon, right? Because it's closer. It feels possible. It wouldn't be so stressful. So it's just a little tricky. This goal stuff can be a little tricky sometimes. Well, yeah, right. Haitham says, you will not be able to speak English like a native in one month or week. 
Well, exactly. So, uh, you know, it's okay as that's to have that as a goal. Like we'll talk next week when I talk to Matt that his goal was to speak uh, basically perfect Japanese like a native. And I think, uh, you know, he said he's, he didn't completely achieve it 100%, but I think he's probably 99% <laughs> achieved it. He did a really great job. But I, we'll talk with him about this. Well, yeah, here's another problem. I'm so bored, I feel it's impossible, Rwand. See, this is the other problem. It can start to feel boring because when your goal fe is so, to, feels too far, then you start to become bored with today because, oh, well, today I'm not even close to my goal. Still not close, right? And tomorrow, I'm still not close. And the next day, still not close. It's too far. And you can start to become bored because you're too focused on the future and not on now. So it's better to, in that situation, you're feeling bored, change your goal, create a short goal, create a short goal, like next month, next month, you want to achieve something next month or maybe in three months. One to three months is a nice time. You could, your goal could be just to read a certain number of pages in English, to listen a certain number of hours, um, to watch, I don't know, season one of Friends, something like that. You know you can do that, and you'll be, and it's much more fun. Well, like Ziad says, the problem is we don't take action and think, I don't have time, passing time with awful thoughts. This is another problem with large goals. They seem so far, they kill your action because you feel like, okay, I can do something today, but it's just such a tiny step. But if you have a goal that's close, then you feel like you get excited because you're like, I'm, I'm so close and you want to take a step. You want to take another step because you know you're getting close to that. So again, this is a big advantage of making your goals more achievable. They got, they've got to feel achievable. It's more about your mindset, right? It's, it's that you feel inside or you think you have a confidence that you can do it. It's possible. You can't do it right now, but you feel like I can, this is possible. If a goal feels impossible, then it will kill your motivation. It's got to feel possible to you. So you make it smaller and smaller until it feels possible. Hey, Giuliano and Sardinia. Good to see you. Yeah, like Nana says, Nana Komatsu says, uh, that's true. One time I was kind of frustrated because my goal was improving my English like a native. I wasn't achieving it. But then I looked back and I saw how much I have been improving. I was glad. I felt so nice about it. Yes. No, not very nice. It just helps to, to do this, to review your achievements, to appreciate what you have already done. It reminds you that, aha, I can improve. I can, and I am. Yeah, Abraham Ali, see, he's reading a book in English. Finish. Give yourself the gift of done by John uh, Acuff. See, I mean, you can read books completely in English for native speakers. That's great. Claudio, good to see you from Milan. Yeah, like Lisa says, right now my goal is to enjoy a nice conversation, movies, and books in English. I started learning English years ago, but I didn't put enough effort into it. Now I feel I'm able to spend more time, more effort every day. I'm doing it, and I really enjoy it. Fantastic. See, this is the reward. You just start to enjoy it. Having conversations, enjoying movies, enjoying books. These are fun, right? So th these, you're starting to enjoy the process. So important.
Will reading more books improve my English speaking? Yeah, especially your vocabulary. Reading is number one for vocabulary. really helps. Yeah, now this is well said by Lucas. Lucas says, AJ, I think the goals are important, but much more important is the road after the goals, right? The path. For example, what are you doing for your goals every day? This I agree with this. If my goal is to learn German and my goal is to be fluent, I need to practice German every day. The most important is the system, the daily system, the daily habits. How to achieve my goal. It's all about our actions. Words without actions are worthless. Yes, this is another way. Um, what's his name? Mm. Scott Adams. Scott Adams talks about this. He has a book about this. He he's, talks about that systems are more important than goals. So systems means really habits. It's kind of like your organized habits, that that will give you more success when you focus on systems than habits. So for example, a system would be, I will read one hour English every day. I will listen to one hour of English every day. And I will review one hour of vocab, you know, from my reading every day. And you do it every day. That's a system. It's a system. You do it every day, every day, every day. It's a system and it will improve your English a lot. Over time, you will get better and better and better by focusing on the system, the habits. Yeah, like Abdullah, he says, it's helpful tip uh, to partition big goals into mini goals. It means divide. That leads to the final goal. In our way, the big goal is very important, like you said. Yeah, right. That's another way to think of it. So imagine you have your huge goal, whatever your goal is, your big goal. Speak fluent English like a native, like a native. Well, you don't start with that goal as the first goal. It's too big. You break it, right? What's the path? Where are you now? What's the first step? Then what's the next step? What's the next goal? So maybe you create five or 10 goals step by step by step and then just focus on the next one, the one that's in front of you. Yeah, see, this is a good idea. This is cool what Mikhail uh, says. During our challenge, I noticed one thing. Some days I don't have motivation. Then I just start listening to podcasts or some interesting videos and my motivation incredibly increases. So for example, I had planned to listen two hours and I finished the day with six or more. Exact, this, is, this is true. I, this is something I experienced with running many times, many times <laughs> when I was running a lot or training for a marathon. So I'd get up and it's time to run, maybe morning, right? And I'm like, uh, I'm just tired. I don't want to. I don't want to run today. Uh, I feel lazy. I don't want to run today. Uh, you know, like for an hour, I'm just complaining. And uh, but I do it. You know, I put on my clothes. Uh, uh all right. Uh, maybe just a short run today. Today, just I'll just do a short run. And so I finally I get outside. Uh, start jogging. Uh, Okay, and then like after 10 minutes or 20 minutes, start feeling good, start feeling better, start feeling better. Energy starts going up and up and up, start running faster, a little faster, a little faster. And then suddenly it's, you know, one hour later, I'm feeling great and I keep going and I have a nice long run and feel fantastic. And then the rest of the day feel really good. This, this doesn't, it doesn't always happen. <laughs> Sometimes you just feel bad, but, um, but it happens many times when you do this, that, that, that if you just push yourself to do a little bit, that sometimes you start to feel better, you start to enjoy doing it. And then suddenly you do much more than you expect, right? You think, oh, okay, I'll today I'll, I'll just run 30 minutes. But then after 30 minutes, you feel great. You keep going for one hour or two hours. Or like uh, Mikhail says, 
You say, oh, I don't want to listen to English today. Uh, all right, I'll just do 20 minutes. I'll just listen 20 minutes today. And you listen 20 minutes, and then you start enjoying it. It's The video's interesting. The audio's interesting. And you go, oh, I'll keep going. And you do 30 minutes, an hour, two hours, six hours. So don't let the first feeling stop you. That's also important each day. You know, even when you feel lazy, make yourself do a little bit. Just push yourself to do a little if you still feel bad, okay, have an easy day. Just do a short day. That happens sometimes. But sometimes also, you think it will be an easy day. You think it will be a short day. But something changes. You have a good time and you do a lot more. Good, uh, good comment. Lewa says hi from... Texas. Hello to Texas. See, this is cool. Darby says, on my learning English journey, I started a challenge where I learned 10 new words every day. Now I'm doing 60 new words a day. See, this is cool too. This is, again, where you start with a goal. So, if Darby started with 60 words, maybe it would have felt impossible to him in the beginning. And he said, ah, 60, ah, and he would have stopped, maybe quit. But instead, he said, 10, 10 seems possible. I'll do 10 new words a day. And then he realized, okay, after a while, oh, 10 is easy. I'm used to doing 10 now. Maybe I'll do 20. And then he probably did that for a while. And then he said, well, I could probably do 30. And now he's all the way up to 60. So that's fantastic. Oh, Abra says, if you want to do an interview an interesting person, contact Tenzin Wangyal Rinpoche. I assume is Tibetan Buddhist. He's a great teacher of our time. Abra, if you could send me a link to uh, his website or video or some contact. I just would like to learn a little more about him, but you know, I, I'm open to that for sure. Okay, I'm going to finish with Alexi's comment because he's got a nice long comment. He always has good comments, so don't even need to read them first. Let's just see what Alexi says. Okay, every day we want to see improvement, but it doesn't work this way, indeed. We've come, we have to compare ourselves every month, not days. It's a good point. A lot of professional bodybuilders, for example, have their own coach to understand what kind of muscle they're improving. In my case, to achieve something, whether it be in good shape or be good at English, I have to turn the fearful thing into a habit to improve steadily without doubt. If the babies would be afraid to start walking, they would uh, never be able to do such basic things when they're grown. Good point. I've also saved myself mentally in the gym when I'm doing the last reps. Just get it done, even if you die. It helps a lot. As you can see, I'm still alive. <laughs> yeah, yeah. These are all good points. Uh, point number one being that, right, it's very hard to improve day to day. You might be improving, but you don't feel it. That's the point. So with your English, if you learn one new word or you listen, you know, an hour you probably have improved, but maybe it's a tiny improvement. You don't notice it so much. So it's harder to feel the improvement. So I agree with Alexi that it's better to compare months, you know, months instead of days. So look back four months ago or six months ago compared to now. Are you better? Well, then now you know you're improving. But if you just look to yesterday, you probably think, well, I'm the same. Well, because it's too short. The time's too short. That's good point number one. Uh, and, and bodybuilding is a great example of this because, yeah, a bodybuilder goes to the gym and they work a muscle. Let's say they work their shoulders one day. Well, the, sh the shoulder is not bigger the next day, right? They're not, they don't notice, oh, my shoulder is much bigger today. No, it takes a while, right? They've got to eat a lot. They've got to work that shoulder many times, their shoulders. And then, yes, after month or months, they will get bigger shoulders and bigger muscles in general. But it takes some time. So there is a, 
time lag, right? Get, this is why our challenge is four months long. I First, it was three months. I decided, let's make it a little longer because then we will notice... We'll notice the improvement. We can notice the change. One month's not enough time to notice. Now, some of you already are noticing improvements. That's great. I notice improvement. I'm better than one month ago in Japanese, for sure. But I'm, I'm starting at zero level, so of course I'm improving. It's, when you're a low beginner, uh, the improvement is very obvious. But when you're intermediate level, the improvement is less obvious. So you need longer time. One month for some of you is not enough time to notice improvements, but four months I do think is enough. If you're really working hard for our challenge these four months, I think at the end of November you will definitely notice improvements, possibly very big improvements. So Alexi, very good. Uh, always has great comments. We'll just end this show today by looking at our challenge So here on our challenge board, we have the listening. Oop. Sign in, sign in. All right, on our listening challenge. So right at the top, you know, these guys now have uh, four to 500 hours. We've been doing this, what? We're about week number five almost. So that's almost 100 hours a, a week. That's pretty impressive. <laughs> so Edward Anderson, Sven, H., Aliman Ali, Julia Lemayne, Shero, uh, Jose Ramos, Ramos I, uh, I am Peramal, Jean Ribeiro, Julia Taquita, Alexander Beliakov. Nicely done, all of you. That's, so that's ranging from 284 all the way up to 568. You know, that's some serious hours, guys. Great job. Great job. And we'll look over in the reading. I've been focusing on listening, as I've said. So I'm curious about the readers. Edward Anderson. So Edward Anderson, I think clearly what we're seeing with uh, Sven and Edward is that they're combining their reading and listening at the same time. That's how they're getting these big hours on both. Otherwise, it would be impossible. <laughs> okay. So they're reading along as they listen, which is not a bad technique. It's a nice technique. And same, uh, and we have Roberto de Santos with 200 and, almost 230 hours of reading. Carol, I know, is focused very much on reading. And she's got 211 hours of reading. I imagine Carol's vocabulary is improving very fast. All of these people, I imagine their vocabulary is growing quite a lot. Because uh, what reading especially does is improves your vocabulary a lot. Much better than listening. Now, listening has other benefits. <laughs> so, um, but... But I've noticed myself with Japanese that I feel like I need to do more reading because I, I just feel my vocabulary is not growing fast enough. Starting to get a little frustrated that I, I feel like I need to learn more words. You know, I feel this pressure now. And so I'm trying to push myself to do a little more reading because I need to get the words. On the other hand, my listening has improved quite a lot. And then we have, um, uh, was it Hikam? And Mirwais and Shero, I imagine, is also doing the, the double thing. Salvador Ramirez, Inderpal, and Zibinek, uh, Skalinski at their top 10 for reading. Again, good job. I mean, really getting in some big hours of reading. That is like vocabulary superpower right there. These guys are getting, and everyone else who's doing that reading. Congratulations. Excellent. Excellent. Finally, don't forget our Gab group. That's where you can see what other people are reading. You get ideas. What I like about this uh, uh, Gab group, if you can see on Gab, yep, you're seeing the screen if you're watching, our Gab group here is that uh, you, you get some cool ideas about things to listen to or things to watch or things to read because you can see everybody's posting what they are reading, what they are listening to. So you can kind of find... Maybe you're getting bored and you want something new, something interesting. So you can go through and see like, oh, that's cool. What's that? And click the link or do a search. And, you know, like this Brian Tracy book, per Personal Power Lessons for a Better Life. That sounds like an interesting book. It's an audio book. Julia's listening to it. Robinson Caruso. Those are good stories. Uh, Albertina is reading Robinson Caruso. 
and also Hansel and Gretel, fairy tales. I like fairy tales too. I'm listening to uh, traditional old Japanese stories, old audiobooks, Momotaro and Isun Boshi and you know, the little the little samurai, all these kind of traditional uh, stories. I like them. They're really nice. But anyway, you get the, you see the idea that people are posting videos, YouTube videos, uh, the names of books, the names of audios, audio books. You can get a lot of ideas here from the Gab group of different things that are might be interesting to you. All different things. So please continue posting your books and your audios and your videos in our Gab group. Also, you maybe you can meet other people and you can uh, check make a schedule and, you know, chat on Skype with other members. Get on our Gab group. That's It's really cool. Okay. Mwah. Lots of love to you. I have to go watch some babies. I'm on the night shift, night duty. And uh, I'll be back tomorrow. So have a great day. Continue with the challenge and set those goals, but make sure the goal feels possible. That's the key point here with goals. It should feel possible and you must enjoy now. You must enjoy now. Don't forget. Join my VIP program at EffortlessEnglishClub.com. Commit, don't quit. Go now to EffortlessEnglishClub.com.